If it's love, it's at the table. If it's peace, it's at the table. Come on. To them. Became a thorn to them. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily besets us, and let us run the race with patience, the race that is set before us. Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God, uh, uh, of the throne of God. God is telling us, whatever is your altar, if it ain't God, if God is not the apple of your eye, it, it will become a weight to you. It will become something that will weigh you down. And the same thing with the children of Israel. Uh, uh, whatever became the apple of their eye, whatever became their focus, whatever it was, it did not matter if they took their focus off of God and they began to worship something else. I, I come to tell you, they were coming down. They were coming down. The question is, what is your altar? What is your altar? What is the apple of your eye? What is it that causes you to be faithful to something else more than being faithful to God? What is it? Is it that almighty dollar? Oh, we can be faithful to the man on the job. Why? Because we think that that's our bread and butter. We think that that's the one, he's the one that puts the roof over our head. He's the one that puts clothes on our back. He's the one uh, that, that, that makes sure that we're able to pay our bills. Oh, we'll be faithful. We're never late for him. We're right on time for him. Amen. We, we, we're always serving him. Amen. And, and the question is, is he your altar? Is he what you exalted higher than God? Oh, listen to the excuses that we make when serving God. Oh, I don't feel good. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, uh, I just, I'm just tired. Amen. But, but when it comes to serving on that job, oh, you, you're there every Sunday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And uh, when, whenever you can make it in, you have to make it in. And the question is, what is more important to you? Is it your family member? Your wife, is she your altar? Oh, when she say jump, you say how high. When she say, uh, I need this, you run and you get it for her. Uh, when, 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 when she say, uh, uh, when, when she say uh, I want to I, I wanna go on vacation, you say, uh, okay, let's go. But the question is, when it comes to doing the basic things of serving God, what is more important? Some folks, uh, 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 it's my anniversary, I, I can't go to church. In the midst of whatever you're going through, God's supposed to be Amen. the apple of your eye. Amen. Because he's the one who blessed you with a wife. He's the one who blessed you with a husband. And so he's the one in spite of everything that is going on, He's supposed to be the apple Amen. of your eye. Amen. We live in a society that when it comes to serving God, it has become so common. And it's become so commonplace that we can take God, we can leave God, we can be faithful to God, we cannot be faithful to God. It's become commonplace. Uh, 
we, we, we commit to certain things in ministry. But whether we do it or not, it doesn't matter. We say, uh, well, I'm going to serve in this area, and I'm going to serve in that area. And we make a commitment not to the pastor, not to the first lady, not to the trustees, not to the leadership of the church. But you make a commitment unto God. And you say, God, I, I'm going to be faithful over this ministry because this is as unto you. But then when uh, 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 the, 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 the other things in life begin to come into uh, 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 contra uh, come into some type of uh, conflict with what with serving God, we say, well, the things of God can wait. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, 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 I, I, I'm supposed to be faithful over this ministry. But, 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 but guess what? We're having a, we're having a family reunion. I, I, I'm putting that to the side. Oh, we're having uh, uh, we, 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 uh, little Pookie Dookie has a, has a baseball game. So I'm putting God to the side. Amen. But, but you see, our children, when they see that commitment, in spite of what you want to do, and when they see that commitment and say, I'm sorry, I can't make it to your game this Sunday I, or this Saturday because I have committed to something else. Not all the time, but there should be some kind of balance in our lives. We're living in this time where people just when it comes to the things of God, they can put it down. So the question is, what is our altar? Who is our altar? What altar are you worshiping at? And if it's an altar that does not line up with the word of God, it has to be torn down. God at this place called Beckham. He had to dispatch his angels, his angel, to, uh, from Gilgal to Beckham, and said, I led you, I led you, <coughs> I led you out of Egypt. I brought you, we know Egypt represents what? The world. I brought you, Egypt represents what? Sin. I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you out I led you out of Egypt and brought you uh, to the land in which I swore to you. I brought you into a land. I brought you into a place where you can worship me in spirit and worship me in truth. I brought you out of darkness and into the marvelous light. You were blind, but now you see. You were lost, but now you're found. I brought you in. I never broke my covenant with you. I've always been faithful to you. I've always provided for you. I've always blessed you. I've been faithful to you. Never broke my covenant. Always had your back. Always kept my agreement with you. I'm married to you. Even when you backslide, I'm married to the backslider. Even when you don't do what you're supposed to do, I'm married to you. I never broke my covenant with you. When you went and you cheated on me and you served other gods and you worship money and you worship fame and you worship power and you worship uh, all of these other things, I was still there for you. Never broke my covenant with you. While you were out committing spiritual adultery, I was still there for you. I was still, I still had your back. When you worshiped other things besides me, I still was there for you. Never broke my covenant with you. And you shall make no covenant. You shouldn't be making no covenants with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. I've done so much for you. And you're still stiff necked. I've done so much for you and you're still stubborn. I've done so much for you. I bless you with health. I bless you with strength. I bless you with wealth. Yes. And you still do whatever you want to do. Go wherever you want to go. You still don't obey me. He says, therefore, I also said I will drive. I will not drive them out. Because you have chose to put other things before me, you wonder why you're sick. You wonder why you're broke, busted, and disgusted. You wonder why. See, the thing I love about God, God is immutable. That means God's judgments don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We wonder why we're going through the things in which we're going through because God doesn't change. 
If he did it to Israel, guess what? He'll do it to you. Yes, we're in the dispensation of grace. But I want you to know, whatsoever a man sow, he shall also.